This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about some great news for Bitcoin mining decentralization. We learned on April 14th that Tether is going to deploy some hash rate, in fact, all of their current and future hash rate to ocean mining, advancing decentralized Bitcoin mining infrastructure. So let's break this down. First, we have Tether, which is the largest US dollar stablecoin issuer in the world, and they issue USDT. USDT currently has a market cap of about $145 billion as I'm recording this. And if they're holding the proceeds in current T-bills, three or six month T-bills, which are trading at about 4.3%, that means just from interest income, they are bringing in $6.24 billion in annual revenues. I think last year their revenues exceeded $10 billion because interest rates were higher. And I think they were also counting some of the appreciation of their Bitcoin. So perhaps this is the most elegant business model in the world. You give them some dollars, they buy T-bills, they issue you a stable coin, and they make money on the interest income. And so Tether is basically swimming in money, at least until the Fed cuts interest rates back down to zero, if that's something they're going to do. I don't like the fact that Tether's main business model is helping to fund the U.S. government by buying these T-bills. But apart from that, it's hard to deny that they do do a lot of good for the Bitcoin ecosystem, including buying and hodling lots of Bitcoin for their own corporation, for Tether itself, as well as funding numerous Bitcoin projects. So that's Tether. Next, we have Ocean Mining, which I've spoken about a few times on the channel. I'll put a link to their website, which is ocean.xyz. There are a lot of nice things about the Ocean Mining pool. First of all, it's permissionless. You can just point your mining rig to mine.ocean.xyz colon 3334. You don't need to sign up. You don't need an account. You don't need to do anything. You can just start mining with them. They're non-KYC, unlike large American mining pools like Foundry, for example. Ocean is also non-custodial. Miners get paid directly by the Bitcoin network through what's called the Coinbase transaction, which is the minor reward transaction. It has nothing to do with Brian Armstrong and his terrible company. So Ocean Mining is permissionless, non-KYC, non-custodial. Really, Ocean is the most cypherpunk of mining pools out there, and they're completely transparent as well. I'll put a link in the description notes to their dashboard where you can see all the blocks that they have found. They are here and you can scroll back and look uh, over one month, six months, etc. And you can also see the Bitcoin addresses of all the users, what their hash rate is and their share of the hash. So this is completely transparent. We don't know who these people are who are mining, but this is the most radically transparent Bitcoin mining pool. Another nice thing about Ocean is if you choose to mine with them, you can have your name put on the block that you find for them. So for example, here's Penguin who is mining with, with Datum and uh, Ocean, and they are able to put their name right there. You can basically click, if you go back to the dashboard here and you click on a block, it'll take you to mempool.space and you can see who, who mined it, this one, Electron Energy, it looks like. So that's another great thing about Ocean. But most importantly, Ocean allows miners to create their own block templates, i.e. they get to decide, individual miners get to decide which Bitcoin transactions get included in a block that they mine. And you have to basically build up this transaction list before you start hashing and trying to find the proof of work necessary to mine the block. This is incredibly important, being able to create your own block template, because today there are only a few groups in the world who get to decide what goes into most Bitcoin blocks. And those are the people in charge of the large mining pools like Foundry and Antpool. And Antpool itself appears to control most of the other Chinese mining pools. Foundry is the U.S. pool. Antpool is a large Chinese pool that is basically funding other Chinese mining pools as well. So in many ways, it's a pool of pools. So these are the people in charge of creating block templates, people like the leaders at Foundry and Antpool, who create the block templates that are then given to the individual miners or mining rigs who mine for those pools. If you're enjoying this video so far, just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel and its educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. B10C has done some great work here, which I'll link to in the description notes below. He or she writes, in the current Bitcoin mining landscape with proxy pools like and pool and friends, six mining pools produce and mine more than 95% of the block templates. Bitcoin mining is highly centralized today. And if we take a look at a snapshot he has from April of 2025, and pool and friends, 31.7% via BTC, which is another Bitcoin mining pool, another Chinese Bitcoin mining pool at 14%. Here's Foundry. And so if you had and pool and Foundry get together, for example, 
and pool and friends and foundry get together, you'd have more than 62% of the hash rate. That's definitely more than 50%. And so at least theoretically, they could execute a 51% attack. Now, fortunately, and pool and foundry reside in different jurisdictions. They're currently at geopolitical odds with each other. So this threat of collusion to censor Bitcoin transactions is currently quite low. And if they did something like this, it would really end up probably just backfiring and hurting themselves. And what nodes could do, what Bitcoin nodes could do, we could do a fork, a hard fork, and basically move away from SHA-256 and brick all the machines. Now, that would be a last ditch thing that we don't really want to have to think about at this point. But there are ways of dealing with collusion if it were to happen. Fortunately, the biggest pools here are Chinese and, and US, and they're really not going to collude together, at least in this current environment. Apart from this geopolitical balance of hash power, if mining pools start to censor Bitcoin transactions, another solution would be for the individual miners, the individual people who run the mining rigs who are part of that pool. They're always free to leave and go to a different mining pool that is not censoring transactions. Mining pools, it's important to note, are not mining farms. A mining pool is really just an IP address or a node that anyone can point their mining rig to. So for example, I could point my hash from Colorado to one of these Chinese mining pools and mine with them. Not that I would really want to. But the fact does remain that block template construction remains quite centralized. So fortunately, Ocean Mining has fixed this with something called DATUM, which stands for Decentralized Alternative Templates for Universal Mining, DATUM. Similar to Stratum V2, Datum is designed to decentralize block construction by empowering miners to create their own block templates via their own Bitcoin node. Users can mine on pools that offer Datum support or solo mine without needing a third party to set up a server for them. So this is really the best of both worlds where you get to reduce the variance of finding blocks. So if you, if you solo mine and you have very low hash power, you might not find a block for 30 or 50 years and all that time you're paying electricity costs so it's important to mine with other people. This is why mining pools exist. So people, so at least someone in your pool will find a block sometime soon, and then you can all share in the rewards in proportion to the hash rate that you're contributing. So that's the purpose of mining pools. They're not mandatory. You can certainly solo mine, but most people do choose to mine with pools. The real problem with pools is when those pools then create all the blocks and the block templates and decide what transactions go into each block. So Ocean is really the best of both worlds where you get to mine in a pool and reduce your variance while creating your own block template. And it looks like Tether is going to be using Datum as part of their rollout. This is from the Tether announcement. Tether will roll out Ocean's Datum gateway across its mining operations worldwide, including in rural and underserved areas such as parts of Afri Africa, by enabling on-site generation of unique block templates and aggregating thousands of rig connections with low latency performance. Datum ensures global competitiveness while promoting geographic and operational diversity. So this is another nice thing. These mining rigs are distributed all around the world and they're in uh, on different continents as well. As Ilya points out here, Ocean is reaching hash rate escape velocity. More frequent blocks and payouts makes it a no-brainer for miners like Megawatt HQ, who already valued Ocean's transparency and decentralization. Congrats. So basically, the more people who mine with Ocean, the less variance there is, the more frequent payouts there are, and that makes even more people want to mine with them. And if we take a look here at their hash rate, we can see that it's been moving from being below two exahashes per second. And then for most of 2024, it was above, or was trying to break above four exahashes per second. And now it's recently trading up at six exahashes per second. So Tether may have already used, may have already moved some of their hash over to Ocean as we speak. And we can expect this to continue as Bitcoin to the oblivion points out here. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the pub co miners, the publicly traded Bitcoin miners, especially in the US, will also start mining with Ocean Mining in the next 12 to 24 months. It seems like FPPS Ponzi, this is where you basically get paid a fixed amount per month, whether the, the pool finds a block or not. And in an era of low block rewards or blow, low block subsidies and high transaction or a high percentage of, of your reward coming from transaction fees, this can be a problem. And so basically with Ocean, it is the way it should be where you basically eat what you kill and you're not getting paid even if the pool doesn't mine blocks as you would be under FPPS. But the general point here that Bitcoin to Oblivion is making is he wouldn't be surprised if more and more people move over to mining uh, to Ocean. And then Francis points out something, Francis Puglia points out something quite interesting here as well that may be part of Tether's strategy. Any large organization that is concerned about the highly unlikely scenario of its payments being censored by mining pools 
can give themselves a 100% guarantee of transactional freedom by becoming a miner. Just 0.1% of the hash rate gives you one block of settlement transactions per week. And so Tether may be looking to future-proof itself here by making sure that if it needs to include some transactions in, the, in a block that perhaps governments don't like, maybe the U.S. government doesn't like, they'll still be able to do it because they'll be able to do it with their own mining and pointing their hash to Ocean. So this is great for Tether. This is great for Ocean. And I think it's great for Bitcoin as well as we help to move toward down the path towards more block template uh, block template decentralization, where we just don't have a few groups determining them, and thus opening up the possibility of censorship. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.